it's like this. He has a beautiful golden complexion. And he's always surrounded by his associates. And he's dancing with his arms raised, singing the glories of the congregational chanting of the holy names. Is that it? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became embarrassed. He said, Sanatan, you are playing tricks on me. He continued by explaining in the original board of Goloka, Krishna is eternally present, and once in every day of Brahma, he descends to this world. And there he manifests four different ages. His baby and tiny childhood age, which is called Komara Lila. His boyhood, or Poganda, his youthful age, Kaishor, and his developed youthful age, or Yovana. And how Krishna is performing his transcendental pastimes on this earth in Vrindavan for 125 years. He explains how the Vrindavan Lila is the supreme, most perfect. That Krishna is perfect and complete. When he appears in Vaikuntha, he is complete in his perfection. When he appears in Mathura and Dwarka, he is more complete in his perfection. And when he appears as Gopinath in Vrindavan, he is most complete and perfect. He explained how the Vrindavan Lila is so extraordinarily exalted that even Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, was bewildered when he came to Vrindavan to see the incredible loving relationships between Krishna and his friends. In Vaikuntha, the Lord is being worshipped by all living entities with great majestic devotion. But when Brahma came to look down in Vrindavan after Krishna killed the Agasura, he saw Krishna sitting on bank of Jamuna as an ordinary cowherd boy, just eating the remnants of the cowherd boys. They would all take bites from their ladus and other food and say, Oh, this is very nice. Try this, Krishna. And Krishna would eat it. Brahma was bewildered. Who is this Krishna? Just to test him, he stole the calves and the boys. And when he returned, he saw that Krishna manifested each form perfectly. And then each form of Krishna, each, each little cowherd boy and calf manifested the form of Vishnu. This is the supreme glory of the position of Vrindavan. Mahaprabhu explained how below Goloka Vrindavan is the Vaikuntas, below Vaikuntha is the Viraja which is the border between material and spiritual existence. And within material existence, there are innumerable universes like mustard seeds in a bag of mustard seeds. And yet the illusion is every living being is thinking that they're the center of the universe. If I'm happy that everything is very nice, in this regard, Lord Chaitanya told the story of when Lord Brahma came to visit Dwarka. He said to the gatekeeper, please tell Krishna that Brahma has come to see him. Krishna said, oh, which Brahma? The four-headed Brahma. Tell him to come in. 
But on his way in, Krishna called so many other Brahmas. Brahma saw eight-headed Brahmas, 16-headed Brahmas, 32-headed Brahmas, 64-headed Brahmas. Some Brahmas had hundreds of heads, some thousands. He even saw a Brahma with millions of heads. He felt utterly insignificant because he only had four. Because <laughs> according to the size of the universe, that's how many heads Brahma has. They were all bowing down to Krishna and he said, I will protect you from all demons, you all go back to your abodes. And little tiny Brahma was the only one left, offered his worship to the Lord, understanding how before God we are all insignificant. Lord Chaitanya explained the sweetness of Vrindavan. How even Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of Vaikuntha, performed vows to enter into the Leela of Vrindavan. But she was not able to do so. The only way to achieve residence of Vrindavan is through following the 64 principles of devotional service, of which five are prominent associating with devotees, chanting the holy names of the Lord, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, living in a holy place, worshipping Tulsi, and worshipping the deity of the Lord with great devotion. He described how there are different stages of bhakti that one progresses through sadhana bhakti which has two parts vaidhi bhakti which means we advance by strictly following rules and regulations then there is raga bhakti where we begin to develop spontaneous devotional service and through ragatmika bhakti we ultimately come to bhava bhakti or serving the Lord with pure unalloyed devotion. And through that we gradually come to the ultimate perfection of Krishna Prema. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was asked by Sanatana Goswami that please, I have heard that you explain the Atmarama verse of Srimad Bhagavatam to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Can you explain it to me as well? The Atmarama verse teaches that even the greatest, most liberated souls, they are attracted to devotional service to Krishna. Lord Chaitanya explained the Atmarama verse in 61 different ways, with 61 different points of view. He also explained within his explanation the story of Magrari the hunter being delivered by Narada Muni. He taught Sanatana Goswami on the banks of the Ganges in the holy place of Kashi every day, all day for two months. Then he told Sanatana that whatever I have spoken you should write books to reveal these truths to the world. Lord Chaitanya told Sanatana Goswami that he was entrusting him with his mission, that he should go to Brindavan. He should teach what is the behavior of a devotee, what is the duty of a devotee, what is Vaishnav etiquette? What is the behavior of one in the renounced order of life? From all the scriptures you should extract that the essence of all knowledge is pure unalloyed devotional service to Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. And you should also excavate the holy places and establish temples. 
Sanatan Goswami then took leave of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As they left, there was great separation in both of their hearts. Sanatan then went to Brindavan, where he met with Subhuti Rai. Subhuti Rai was a great devotee of the Lord, whose whole life was just to serve all Lord Chaitanya's associates when they came. Subhuti Rai took Sanatana Goswami through the twelve forests of Braja. He offered Sanatana Goswami a place to live. But Sanatana Goswami was so happy living in Vrindavan that by his own free will he decided to live under a different tree each night. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also instructed Sanatana Goswami that in due course of time you should serve my devotees who come from distant places. Because my devotees are generally very poor, they don't have much, just a water pot and some little clothes. You should give them shelter and maintain the Vaishnavas when they come. So Sanatan lived with Subhuti Rai for some time. But he found out that Rupa Goswami had already been there and went to Puri. With Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's permission, Sanatan Goswami then began his journey to Jagannath Puri. He traveled through the Jarikanda forest all alone. Sometimes he would fast because there was just no food. Sometimes he would get some little bit that he would offer to Krishna and partake. Due to this severe fasting and due to his drinking some contaminated water from one of the ponds of the forest, he contracted a terribly painful skin disease. His entire body had itching sores that were intolerable. And from all of those sores, there was contaminated blood oozing out of them. Sanatan Goswami was thinking that I'm low-born, I'm sinful, and look at my body. It's useless. My life is useless. I'm going to Puri, but I won't be allowed to enter into Jagannath's temple. And because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lives right close to the temple, and the servants of Jagannath are coming in and out of the temple, I won't even be allowed to see Lord Chaitanya. With this contaminated existence of mine, I won't be able to do any practical service. What is the use of my life? Ah, when I get to Puri, I will have darshan of Jagannath. And at the Ratha Yatra, in the presence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I will throw this wretched body under the wheel of the cart. That will be the most auspicious blessing of my life. Then perhaps I will get a better birth in my next life. With this conviction, he continued on his journey, arrived in Jagannath Puri. He went to the Bhajan Kutir of Srila Haridas Thakur, which is called Siddha Bakula. When Haridas Thakur met with Sanatan Goswami, they were both in great, great ecstasy to be together once again. If you remember, Haridas Thakur was the person who personally introduced Sanatana Goswami to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Ramakali. Sanatana Goswami asked Haridas, 
Where is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Haridas replied, He comes here every day. In fact, he should be here any moment. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared right at that time. They both offered their prostrated obeisances. Lord Chaitanya picked up Haridas and embraced him. Haridas said, Laying here at your lotus feet is your beloved Sanatan Goswami. Sanatan got up. Lord Chaitanya went to embrace him. Sanatan said, No, I am the lowest of the low. Please, please do not touch me. My body is contaminated. Lord Chaitanya, by force, embraced Sanatan Goswami. As he embraced him, all over his body, the oozing blood smeared on the beautiful golden form of Goranga Mahaprabhu. This was terribly embarrassing to Sanatan Goswami. Lord Chaitanya inquired, How are you, Sanatan? He replied, Everything is auspicious because I am seeing you, my Lord. Lord Chaitanya inquired, You are coming from Mathura? How are the devotees in Mathura? That was discussed. Lord Chaitanya said, Rupa Goswami was just here. He stayed here in Puri for ten months. Just ten days ago he left. He informed me of the news that your younger brother, Anupam, is dead. Sanatan Goswami explained how my brother Anupan was such a great devotee of Lord Sri Ramchandra. Rupa Goswami and myself, we would tell him day and night the pastimes and teachings of Krishna. One day we said, that Krishna's Leela is the sweetest of the sweet. Krishna's beauty is unparalleled. You should join us and take the mantra of Krishna. Anupam said to us, I cannot refuse you. You can give me the mantra. The next morning he approached us, weeping and crying. He said, last night, I tried to chant the name of Krishna, but the only thing that I could think of in my mind was my worshipable Lord Sri Ramchandra. I cannot give up his devotion. Let anything happen in my life, but please do not take me away from my service to Sri Ramchandra. It is impossible for me. Sanatan said we embraced him congratulated him for his chastity, for his worshipable Lord, and told him, we only said these things just to test you. We are very pleased. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that Anupam has attained the supreme abode of Lord Sri Ram. Similarly, Morari Gupta was like that, and I also congratulated him. Lord Chaitanya told Sanatan that you and Haridas Thakur are both experts in relishing the rasas of Krishna's Leela. You should remain here with Haridas Thakur and constantly hear the glories of the Lord and with Thakur Haridas chant the holy names. I know that due to your humility, you will not go into the Jagannath temple. But right from where you are sitting, you can see the chakra on top of the dome. That is non different than Jagannath. You can have darshan of Jagannath Dev every day by viewing the chakra. Each and every day, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after the Upala Bhog offering in Jagannath's temple would come to see Haridas and Sanatan. 
Srila Prabhupada remarks, Although Sanatana Goswami was so humble, he would not even make an attempt to enter Jagannath's temple. He thought himself so sinful. But due to that humility, Jagannath himself, in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, would every day come out, bring the most succulent Mahaprasad of Jagannath and deliver it to Haridas and Sanatana with his own hand. Every day, Lord Chaitanya would spend hours discussing Krishna's Leela with Sanatan and Haridas. One day, Lord Chaitanya spoke. Give up this nonsense idea of committing suicide. If one could attain Krishna, by committing suicide, I would give up millions and millions and millions of these bodies without a second's hesitation. You can only attain Krishna through devotional service. There is no other way. The idea of suicide is simply the ignorance or the is simply due to the influence of the mode of ignorance. However, sometimes devotees, when they are feeling intense ecstasies of separation, they feel they cannot live without Krishna. At that time, sometimes they want to end their bodies. But when you come to that stage of separation, then Krishna appears before you. Sanatana Goswami, your idea of suicide is simply nonsense. Give it up. You should spend your life hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. That is the only means of attaining Krishna. For Sanatana Goswami was thinking that the Lord does not appreciate my idea of committing suicide. I have to give it up. Then he spoke, O oh Lord, what is the value of this body? It's useless. What profit will you gain if I remain alive? Lord Chaitanya said, your body is my property. You have surrendered to me, therefore you have no longer any claim to your body or life. I am going to use your body as my principal instrument for spreading Krishna consciousness throughout the world. Again he repeated, I want you to go to Vrindavan and write books. Through your books and through your lifestyle, I want you to establish what are the principles that a devotee must live by. What is devotional service? What is Krishna? What is Krishna Prema? What is the etiquette of a Vaishnava and the duties they must perform? How do those in the renounced order of life live? I want you to excavate the holy places of pilgrimage in Vrindavan, which have been lost to the vision of humanity. And I want you to construct temples and preaching, temples by which preaching to the people can enlighten them in the real glory of how to live a Krishna conscious life. What I want to do in Mathura and Vrindavan I cannot, because my mother wants me to stay in Puri. It is my plan to do it through your body. And yet, you want to destroy that body? How could I tolerate this? Haridas Thakur, look at this man. Do you agree with his idea? He wants to destroy another person's property. Haridas Thakur replied, 
my Lord. We are all useless. It is you, my Lord, who are able to utilize us for whatever purposes you want us to serve. But unless you tell us what we're supposed to do, we will never know. I can understand the good fortune of Sanatan Goswami today. Sanatan Goswami said to the Lord that I'm just a wooden doll. And you can make me dance any way you like to dance, but all credit and glory is yours. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then again forcibly embraced Sanatana Goswami. Then he left. Haridas Thakur, he was weeping in ecstasy. He said, Sanatan, you are the most fortunate person in all of creation. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has accepted your body as his own property. He wants you to do his work in Mathura, in Vrindavan. How fortunate you are. But look at me, Haridas said. I am useless. I am sinful. I cannot do any practical service for the Lord. Sanatan Goswami said, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended to expound the mission of Haridam Sankirtan, but he's not doing it himself. He's doing it all through you, Haridas. You are the most fortunate. You are chanting 300,000 names of Krishna every day. And through your life, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will bring the whole world to the lotus feet of Krishna through the congregational chanting of the Holy Name. Some people preach very nicely, Sanatan told Haridas, but their behavior is not very exemplary. And other people, they have very good behavior, but they do not know how to preach. But you, Haridas Thakur, you simultaneously preach perfectly by your words and your example. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is empowering you to deliver the whole universe. Lord Chaitanya, one day, he invited Sanatana Goswami to come to a garden called the Yamala Gardens to take prasad. Now to get there, there was two ways. One is a very nice, cool walk just by the Singhadwaram gate of the Jagannath temple. The other is along the sand of the beach. It was the month of Jeshta. Sanatan Goswami arrived in Puri during April-May and he was called for prasad at the Yamala Gardens May-June, the hottest months. It was noon and the sand was burning like fire. Sanatan Goswami walked along the sand. As he was walking, his feet were being blistered and burnt. However, he was so eager to meet Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he didn't even feel any pain. When he arrived, Lord Chaitanya had already finished prasad and was resting. He told Govinda to give his remnants to Sanatan. After he took prasad, Lord Chaitanya met him. He saw that Sanatan's feet were scorched by the fire of the sand. He said, Sanatan, how did you come here? He said, I came by the beach. You came by the beach? The sand is burning. 
It's intolerable. Why did you not come by way of the Singhatwaram? Sanatan said that the pujaris of the Jagannath temple are coming in and out of the temple. If I go near one of them, they will be polluted and then they will come in and make aparad to Lord Jagannath. Lord Chaitanya, when he heard this, he was so pleased. He said, your humility is melting my heart. I am very pleased that you so strictly observe the etiquette of a Vaishnava. Because that etiquette is the ornament that makes a Vaishnava beautiful in the eyes of Krishna. Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami describes in Chaitanya Charitamrita that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught the world four principal attributes of a Vaishnav through four of his dearest associates. In this world, everyone is afflicted by the powers of Kandarpa or Cupid. He taught the world the highest level of self-control through Ramananda Rai. Ramananda Rai could even be with the most beautiful young ladies, massaging their bodies, teaching them how to sing, to act, and to dance. But because he was always immersed in his eternal Leela as Vishaka Saki, there was absolutely not a trace of agitation that would enter his mind. Through Damodar Pandit, he taught neutrality. Damodar Pandit was so much in the mood of a servant that any devotee who transgressed Vaishnav principles out of kindness of his heart he would point those transgressions out. In fact, he would even criticize Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he appeared to transgress the principles of Vaishnava behavior. In other words, a devotee should not be political. Devotees should be neutral. This was revealed through Damodar Pandit. Through Haridas Thakur, he revealed the attribute of tolerance. His forbearance was so great that even being beaten in 22 marketplaces, he happily tolerated it, thanking the Lord for the mercy he was receiving. And through Sanatan Goswami, he revealed humility. Although the most qualified person in all of the world, he considered himself so lowly and fallen. The Ratayatra came. All the devotees from Bengal arrived. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduced Sanatan Goswami to all of his associates and he praised Sanatan Goswami's glory as if he had five mouths. And all of the devotees were overjoyed to hear what mercy Sanatan Goswami was receiving. And Prabhupada explains this is quality of Vaishnavas. Their greatest joy is to hear other Vaishnavas glorified. And the happiness of their heart is to see how other devotees are getting the special mercy of the Lord. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu loved Sanatana Goswami so very dearly.
One day, Lord Chaitanya was visiting and Sanatan Goswami was somehow or other trying to escape his embrace. He would offer his obeisances from a distance, but Mahaprabhu would forcibly embrace him, and every time his body would be smeared with blood, infectious blood. Sanatan Goswami met with Jagadananda Pandit. He revealed his heart. These are the six loving exchanges of devotees to reveal your heart and confidence and hear another. So he revealed that I came to Puri for my benefit. I'm getting just the opposite. I came for purification, for service. And what's happening? Every time the Lord embraces me, his beautiful pure body is covered with pus and blood. I think due to these offenses, I will be ruined. Jagadananda Pandit said, the Lord has already said that your home is Vrindavan. You've already spent enough time in Puri. Go to Vrindavan. There you will be happy. The next day, Lord Chaitanya came. He went to embrace Sanatan. Sanatan tried to get away, but he embraced him. Sanatan Goswami sat down with the Lord and said, I'm going to leave for Vrindavan. Huh? Who told you to leave for Vrindavan? Jagadananda Pandit. He's my well-wisher. He's a learned scholar. He gave me good advice. Lord Chaitanya became very angry. Who is this Jaga? Impudent neophyte devotee. He thinks that he has the right to instruct you? You are fit to be his guru. You are my advisor. You are fit to deliver the whole universe with Krishna consciousness. It is unbearable for me to think that this young boy, Jagadananda, is telling you what to do. Sanatana Goswami became very sad. He said, how fortunate is Jagadananda Pandit. He's tasting the sweet nectar of your intimate words. But you're praising me just like an outsider. How unfortunate am I? Lord Chaitanya said, no, no, Sanatan. There is no one more dear to me than you. I am not speaking in this way. But it is true. You are a learned scholar who has all the qualities of a pure Vaishnava. Jagadananda should not be instructing you in this way. Sanatan Goswami said, but my Lord, it is a fact what he's saying. I came here for my benefit and my life is being ruined. You keep embracing me. Look at your body. It's covered with blood and pus from my sins. I cannot bear this any longer, my Lord. Lord Chaitanya then revealed his heart. He said, please listen, Haridas and Sanatan. You too are like my own little children. A mother does not feel any hate. Even when she cleans the urine and stool of her child. In fact, due to the affection of the mother, the stool and urine of her baby child smell just like the sacred offering, Chatushama, which is sandalwood, musk, camphor, and saffron. The first time I embraced you, I smelled your body to be just like fresh sandalwood pulp. 
I take great pleasure in embracing you. In fact, I get purified when I embrace you. The perfection of the sight is to see a Vaishnava. The perfection of the ears is to hear a Vaishnava. And the perfection of touch is to touch a Vaishnava. I'm a sannyasi. I'm not supposed to discriminate between what is good and what is bad for my own enjoyment. If I felt the slightest bit of hatred to touch you, that I would be committing an offense to Krishna. Krishna sent you with this disease just to test me. At that time, Sanatana Goswami again saw Lord Chaitanya coming to embrace him. Sanatana tried to get away. My Lord, please, no, no, no. Lord Chaitanya with his long arms captured Sanatana and embraced him. With that embrace, Sanatana Goswami became completely purified. The disease disappeared. His form became beautiful, effulgent like gold. Haridas Thakur, seeing this, cried out, This is your pastime, my lord. That it was you who caused Sanatan to get this disease. just to glorify your devotee. You have now embraced him and made his body perfect. Sanatan Goswami stayed in Puri for one year. After the Dola Yatra, Lord Chaitanya told him he should go to Vrindavan. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami tells us that it cannot be spoken what a piteous scene it was as the Lord and his devotee were about to be separated. Sanatan Goswami got the notes of Balabhadra Bhattacharya telling exactly which places Lord Chaitanya stopped and performed his leelas on his way to Vrindavan. Srila Prabhupada explains in this regard that any place the Lord performs his leela, even a place where he stops for one second, even a place he just walks through, is worshipable by devotees. Sanatan Goswami went through the Jarikanda forest in great ecstasy, visiting the places of the Lord's pastimes. Then he arrived in Vrindavan. Finally, after several years, he was reunited with Srila Rupa Goswami. Sanatan Goswami brought with him to Vrindavan many great Vedic scriptures because his mission was to extract the essence from all of them to write his books. When devotees from Puri or from Bengal would visit Vrindavan and then come back to their homes, everyone would ask them, did you see Rupa and Sanatan? What are they doing? Where are they living? What are they eating? Please tell us about him. These people would say that Rupa and Sanatan, they left the riches of royal opulence in Ram Kali. They have no fixed place of residence. They sleep either under a tree or under the bushes of Braja, a different place each night. They go out and beg door to door on Madhukari. 
They have given up all forms of material enjoyment. The only type of food they get is some dry roti and sometimes fried chickpeas. They are always chanting the holy names of the Lord. They are always discussing the lila of the Lord. They are always dancing in kirtan. They only carry an earthen pot and they wore just some torn, discarded clothes and in the winter a little torn quilt. But they're constantly absorbed in the ecstasy of service to Radha and Krishna. They sleep at the most only one and a half hours a night. And sometimes they're so absorbed in Hari Kata and Hari Kirtan that they don't even sleep at all. They're constantly immersed in meditating on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and carrying out His order to write books declaring the essence of all knowledge, pure devotional service. Sanatana Goswami's priest from Ram Kali, when he heard about Sanatana's life in Vrindavan, he renounced all of his royal services and came to take initiation from Sanatana. Every day, Sanatana Goswami was traveling from one place of Braja to another. The Brijabhasis were more dear to him than his very life. When he would come to a village, the people of Brindavan, they were so very happy to see him. It was as if a poor person was receiving precious jewels. The whole village would come to the outskirts with tears of joy in their eyes to welcome him. They loved Sanatana Goswami so dearly. The older people considered him just like their son. Others considered him just like brother. But at the same time, they respected him as their guru. Sanatana Goswami was the guru of all of Brajbhumi. They would cry out to him, Oh, my brother, finally you have come. Where have you been? Why are you so cruel to us that you have forgotten us? Please, please come and accept our services. The young people would touch his feet Sanatana Goswami did not like anyone to touch his feet. But he was so much affected by the love of these devotees, he could not say no to them from anything. And the older people, even though he was their guru, they were supposed to touch his feet. But because of their affection for him, they completely forgot about touching his feet. They would sit him under a tree and they would bring him milk and yogurt and ghee and all sweets to eat. Sanatana Goswami would inquire from them. He would ask one person, how many children do you have? To another he would ask, who did you marry? To another he would ask, how many cows do you have? Are they giving proper milk? What do you do with their milk? He asked another person, how is your farming? What type of farming are you doing? Are your crops growing nicely? What are you doing with them? He would ask another Brijabasi, how is your health? To another, how is your mental condition? Sanatana Goswami loved the Brijabhasi so much 
that anyone who was having any problem, they would come to Sanatana Goswami and he would give them solace. He would spend the night, and the next morning, as he was about to leave, all the Brijabhasis of that village would be pouring their hearts out in feelings of love in separation from Sanatana Goswami. It was unbearable. As he left, not only were they crying, but Sanatana Goswami was crying. Everyone was crying. Then he would walk a little distance to the next village where everyone was crying to receive him in happiness. And this was his daily life, making people cry in love, crying in meeting, the happy crying, and crying in separation. There was a village called Baitam. Those devotees when Sanatana Goswami was about to leave with their hearts, they were pleading, begging Sanatana, please don't go, stay at least two or three more days. And due to the love of those devotees, he changed his whole regulation and stayed on with them for a few more days. Since that time, that village is very famous amongst Gaudiya Vaishnavas. One time when he was traveling, he came to Nandaghat on the bank of the holy river Jamuna. There he found Jiva Goswami weeping, crying out the holy names of the Lord because he had been exiled by Rupa Goswami. Balababhata came to Brindavan and volunteered to help Rupa Goswami to edit his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, pointing out certain grammatical errors. But Jiva Goswami convinced Balababhata that it was perfect. So Balababhata came back to Rupa and said, here's your book back, there's no need for any corrections. If your disciple Jiva Goswami is so learned, then how can I correct you? So Rupa Goswami, he wanted to show the world the glories of Jiva. Ah, this senior Vaishnav came to render service and you have the impudence to correct him? No one with a trace of false pride has a right to live in Vrindavan. Go home. So Jiva Goswami accepted this chastisement for his purification, thinking, I'm so proud. I have been rejected. He went to Nandagant, and there he performed severe austerities to atone for his offense. But Sanatana Goswami found him there and brought him back to Vrindavan, where Rupa Goswami nursed him back into proper health. Sanatana Goswami once traveled to Mahavan. There was the temple of Madan Gopal, just a small little temple. Madan Gopal was the deity that was originally installed by Vajranab, the great grandson of Krishna. And then it was rediscovered by Adwaitacharya, near Adwaitavat in Braja. The deity was temporarily living in a little temple in Mahavan. And Sanatana Goswami would go every day for the darshan. One day on the banks of the river Jamuna, playing in the sand, Sanatana saw a very 
beautiful cowherd boy playing with friends. And the way they were having their leelas was so charming to the heart. He thought, this boy is not ordinary. All day long, Sanatan just watched the child playing. When evening came, all the children went home, and Sanatan followed this little cowherd boy to his home. He saw the Gopa enter into the Madan Gopal temple. Sanatan entered into the temple, but the boy disappeared. Only Madan Gopal Didi was there. He understood that this child was the Lord himself. Sanatan did not say anything to anyone. He offered his obeisances. That night, the deity appeared to him in a dream and said, I want you to take me with you to be worshipped. It is also said that a Brahmin named Purushottam Chobe, who was a disciple of Adwaitacharya, was worshipping that deity. In the dream, Madan Gopal told him to entrust his worship to Sri Sanatan Goswami. Sanatan brought the deity to the Dwadas Aditya Teel, a little mountain on the banks of the Jamuna in Vrindavan. There he began his devotional service. In Puri, there was a transcendental argument between Jagadananda Pandit and Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jagadananda Pandit was Satyabhama in Krishna's Leela. He was always trying to give comforts and enjoyments to the Lord. Sometimes he would bring very, very expensive sandalwood oil to be massaged on the Lord's body. Other times he would design and offer very nice soft beds for the Lord to lay on. But the Lord would reject it. I'm a sannyasi. I cannot be enjoying these things. Jagadananda was fast. He was so upset. One day he asked Lord Chaitanya's permission to go to Vrindavan. The Lord said, you can go to Vrindavan, but you should only stay a short time. You should not remain in Vrindavan for long. And do not mix too freely with the Brijabhasis, because they have a spontaneous, inconceivable type of devotion to Radha and Krishna. And if you mix with them too freely, you will undoubtedly make aparads to them. You should not go to Vrindavan alone. You should only be in Vrindavan with an experienced Vaishnav who can show you the Dham and protect you. You should associate with Srila Sanatana Goswami and not leave his association ever. And come back here very soon. And give Sanatan this message that very soon I'm going to come to Vrindavan again Ask him to arrange a place for me to stay. Jagadananda Pandit went to Vrindavan, and according to the instructions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was constantly in the association of Sanatan. Sanatan Goswami took him through all the twelve forests of Braj Bhumi. At the end, they came to Mahaban, where Jagadananda was living with Sanatan Goswami in his cave. Sanatan Goswami would go for Madhukari, and sometimes Jagadananda Pandit, in a nearby temple, he would cook the various things that Sanatan would bring for him. 
In fact, Sanatana Goswami was such a loving devotee that he maintained and cared for Jagadananda Pandit day and night. One day Jagadananda Pandit invited Sanatana Goswami to come to this temple for prasad. There was a sannyasi named Mukunda Saraswati who gave Sanatan Goswami one of his red outer cloths. Sanatan came for prasad with that outer cloth wrapped around his head. When Jagadananda Pandit saw it, he was very happy. He was thinking that my Prabhu, he's wearing my worshipable Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's outer garment on his head. How wonderful. I will inquire just to hear the glories of Lord Chaitanya. He said, Oh, Sanatan, who has given you this cloth? Sanatan Goswami said, It was given by Mukunda Saraswati Maharaj. Chakarananda Pandit became so uncontrollably angry, he picked up one of the cooking pots, came to Sanatan to beat him. Sanatana Goswami was in ecstasy. Sanatana said, Now I can understand why you are such a dear devotee of the Lord. You are a great scholar and you have such faith in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Unless you exhibit it in inconceivable ways like this, how will I ever understand and learn how to have faith like this? Today you have proven to me what a glorious servant you are. I am very grateful to you. As far as this cloth, I have no use for it. I will give it to a stranger. Jagarananda Pandit was very embarrassed. They took prasad together. They cried in ecstasy in separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jagadananda Pandit remained with Sanatana Goswami for two months and then with his permission he left. Sanatana Goswami gave gifts, four gifts for Jagadananda Pandit to present to Lord Chaitanya. Sand from the area of Krishna's Ras Lila, a stone from Govardhan Hill, a gunja mala, and some dry pilu fruits. Jagadananda Pandit returned to Puri and offered all of these gifts to Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya kept all of them except the pilu fruits. He distributed those to the devotees. The devotees who knew what is a pilu fruit, they sucked the seeds. Please listen very carefully, this is very important. This is the instruction of Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. But those who did not know what is pilu fruits, they chewed the seeds. Hare Krishna. They were in terrible distress because the seeds of the pilu fruit are hot like chilies. And Lord Chaitanya was very happy to see this. Sanatana Goswami was then waiting for the Lord to arrive. He was given the message, I'm coming for my second visit to Vrindavan. Please arrange a place for me to stay. On Dwadasa Ditya Teel, Sanatana Goswami just made a little hut for Lord Chaitanya to stay in and cleaned the whole area so nicely. He waited eagerly 
day after day after day, but the Lord didn't come. But one night he had a dream. He saw the beautiful golden form of Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu sitting on a celestial platform right there at Dwadasa Dityatiyo. Sanatan offered his prostrated obeisances to Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya placed his feet on top of his head. Then he lifted him up and embraced him. And told Sanatana Goswami, I have come to Vrindavan to satisfy your desires. When Sanatana Goswami woke up from his dream, he understood that the Lord had certainly come. He was worshipping the deity of Madan Mohan in a little hut under a tree. From Madhukari, the most he would get is some dry roti without even any salt. Sanatan Goswami was feeling so much lamentation in his heart. This is all I could offer the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Such a shame. Not even salt for his roti. Even he asks for it, and I cannot give him. While he was thinking this way, Madan Mohan wanted to fulfill the desire of his devotee. And the only desire a devotee has is how to serve the Lord. There was a very wealthy merchant from the district of Multan, whose name was Krishna Das Kapoor. He had a boat with many valuables he was going to sell in Agra. But that boat got caught in the river Jamuna, just below the Dwadasa Dityatiya. It was a helpless situation. All of his riches were at stake. It appeared the boat may even sink. He came to shore, climbed the hill. It is said that Madan Gopal, in the form of a cowherd boy, asked, do you have some salt? <coughs> I have a whole boat of salt. He gave him. You need help? There's a very good Goswami on the top of the hill. He can help you. He climbed up the hill and surrendered at the lotus feet of Sanatana Goswami. However, Sanatana never accepted that he could do anything for anyone. He understood the only shelter is Madan Mohan. This is a preacher. A real preacher doesn't think I can help, but simply tries to connect a person to Krishna and the previous acharyas knowing that they can deliver you. He offered the head of Krishna Das Kapoor to the lotus feet of Madan Mohan. He became a purified Vaishnav. And by the mercy of the Lord, his boat became free. He came back and offered all his wealth to Sanatan Goswami. Sanatan said, I require nothing. I'm quite happy sleeping under these trees. But Madan Mohan, he shouldn't be living in such poverty kindly build him a temple. The first major temple of Vrindavan was constructed under the direction of Sanatan Goswami for Sri Madan Mohan. And to this very day, almost 500 years later, that temple is the very symbol of Vrindavan. Sometime after, 
Gopal Bhatta Goswami came from South India on the instruction of Lord Chaitanya. Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami wrote a letter to Lord Chaitanya in Puri that saying, your dear servant Gopal Bhatta Goswami has come and we have accepted him as our own brother. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so very pleased to see the congenial loving relations between his devotees. He sent very precious gifts of his own remnants to Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, and Rupa Goswami with the message that it is my desire that you live together as brothers in loving relationships serving the mission of Vrindavan. Gopal Bhatta Goswami was so dearly loved by Sanatan. Sanatan Goswami wrote Hari Bhakti Vilas and published it under the name of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Gopal Bhatta Goswami also helped him to edit that book. Sometimes Sanatan would live in the district of Nandagram at Pavansrovar. He slept under a tree in a completely secluded place. Nobody in all the world knew where he was. He was so absorbed in worshipping Krishna and Sri Radharani that for days and days and days at a time he forgot to even eat or drink. Madan Gopal appeared as a beautiful little cowherd boy with a very nice turban around his head decorated with peacock feather. He approached Sanatana Goswami and said, Why are you living in such a secluded place? Nobody knows where you are. But I happened to be herding the cows and I saw you here. I have brought this bucket of milk for you. Please drink this milk. Another thing I want to say to you. You're living on the ground, under a tree, is causing great distress to the hearts of the Brijabhasis. Please, please, if you want to make us happy, build a little hut for yourself and stay there. I'll be back to get my bucket. Then the boy disappeared. Sanatana Goswami drank the milk. By the influence of that milk, his heart erupted with uncontrollable ecstasy. By the influence of the milk, he understood that that little boy was his worshipable Madan Gopal. He was so beside himself in transcendental love that Krishna had to appear to him in an invisible way just to pacify him and reminded him that we are very sad about your living under this tree but we'll be very happy if you have hut bhajan kutir that was the first time Sanatana Goswami accepted a bhajan kutir. And to this very day, on the banks of Pavansrovar, we go to worship the bhajan kutir of Srila Sanatana Goswami. One day, actually Rupa Goswami 
He had a bhajan kutir just a few minutes walk away near Terakadamba in Nandagaon. Rupa Goswami would every day practically come to visit Sanatana Goswami when they were both in the area. For Rupa Goswami considered Sanatana Goswami his spiritual master. In Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he begins by offering his obeisances to Sanatana Goswami, his spiritual master. One day Rupa Goswami wanted to offer some special prasad to Sanatana. At that time, a very charming little gopi cowherd girl brought him some milk, some sugar, some rice, some ghee, some camphor, some saffron. Said, why don't you cook for your Gurudev? But Rupa Goswami was so busy that this little girl personally cooked it. Rupa Goswami offered it to Sanatan. Together they ate it. The first taste of this kheer brought about uncontrollable ecstatic love. Tears were pouring from their eyes, their hairs were standing on end, they were perspiring, they were trembling, they were rolling on the ground. Sanatan said, where did you get this kheer? Oh, this little girl gave me. She cooked it with her own hands. Tell me about this little girl. When he heard description, Sanatan Goswami chastised Rupa Goswami that you have caused me to accept service from our worshipable object of service, Vrindavaneshwari, Srimati Radharani. Rupa Goswami was very much ashamed, but at the same time, this is the way Krishna consciousness is, simultaneous joy and pain, meeting and separation, as they were ashamed with the pain in their hearts that they have accepted service from Radharani, they couldn't stop drinking the sweet rice. <laughs> and that sweet rice was putting them in realms of ecstasy that will never be understood. That night Rupa Goswami was lamenting but Srimati Radharani personally appeared in a dream to him to pacify him, to tell him this was her desire to teach the world through her devotees. How a devotee does not want to accept service from the Lord, but simply wants to offer service without expecting anything in return. That is the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam. One day Sanatan Goswami went to Radha Kund to meet Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. As he was approaching, Raghunath Das was so immersed in his bhajan that he was oblivious to the external circumstances of the world. A tiger came to drink water from Radha and Shama Kund. As the tiger was drinking the water from Shamakund, Krishna appeared with a stick in his hand to protect Raghunath Das Goswami from the tiger. Sanatana Goswami was watching. Tiger went away, Krishna went away. He said, Raghunath Das, what is the purpose of bhajan? It's to serve Radha and Krishna. But your bhajan is causing Krishna to come and serve you like a chokidar with a stick to protect you. The next time Sanatan Goswami came, it was summer month. The sun was burning very hot overhead. Raghunath Das Goswami was immersed in his chanting of the holy names in meditation on the Leela of Radha and Krishna. 
Sanatana Goswami saw Srimati Radhika Rani appear and with her veil of her sari, she was giving shade to Raghunath Das Goswami's head. When the sun went down, Srimati Radha Rani left. Sanatana Goswami came and told Raghunath Das that this is too much. Now Sri Radharani, she's standing for hours at a time, shading your head. You're in the nice, cool shade of her sari, and she's under the sun perspiring. What type of bhajan is this? You build a bhajan kutir. So Sanatana Goswami had a bhajan kutir built for Raghunath Das Goswami. To this day, on the banks of Sri Radha Kund, we worship Raghunath Das Goswami in this holy place. There was a Brahmin who was worshipping Lord Shiva. He was very poor, desired wealth. Lord Shiva appeared to him and told him, If you want wealth, you should go to Brindavan. On the banks of river Jamuna is the Dwadasa Ditya Teal. There you'll find Sanatan Goswami is living. He has a Sparshamani or touchstone. If you touch iron with that touchstone, it will turn it into pure gold. Go. If you ask him, he will give it to you. The Brahmin very enthusiastically came to Brindaban. He climbed up the Dwadasa Dittitil. There was Sanatana Goswami doing his bhajan. Lord Shiva appeared to me and told me that you will give me a Sparshamani. Do you actually have one? Sanatana Goswami said, Yes, I have one. Do you want it? Yes, it's over there. Where? There. There? That's a pile of rubbish. Yes, somewhere in that pile of dust and rubbish, there's a Sparshamani. If you can find it, you can have it. So we looked through the rubbish. There it was. Touchstone! Anything he touched of iron would turn into gold. He was very happy. He was touching and getting gold. But he was blessed by Lord Shiva. Therefore he had good intelligence. He began to think, the whole world is looking for a touchstone like this. But this Sanatana Goswami had it laying in a rubbish bin. He must have something more valuable than this. He went back and asked Sanatan, Do you have something more valuable? He said, Yes, I have something millions of times more precious. Do you want it? Please. First, you take your touchstone and throw it in Jamuna. Because what I have, you cannot receive until you're free from all these other attachments. He had faith in the words of a sadhu. To get the treasure of Krishna consciousness, there has to be that leap of faith in the words of a sadhu. He threw the touchstone in the Jamuna, knowing that it will never be seen again. Sanatana Goswami said, I will now give you a touchstone that will give you something greater than all the gold in creation. The greatest treasure 
is the treasure of Krishna Prema. And that treasure is dormant within your heart. There's only one means of achieving it. Through the touchstone of the sincere chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Sanatan Goswami initiated him in the chanting of the holy names and he became the possessor of the ultimate wealth. At Govinda Kund, Sanatan Goswami performed a very special lila. He met Rupa Goswami and they would discuss their writings with one another. Rupa Goswami, in a poem, described Srimati Radharani and the gopi's hair as formed in long strands going down their backs that looked like black snakes. Sanatana Goswami, he disapproved of this. He said, Rupa Goswami, with all respects, how can you compare the most beautiful plaids of hair of Srimati Radharani to a black snake. Rupa Goswami was silent. Then he said, well, please, Sanatanji, tell me a proper explanation. So Sanatan was thinking about it. Then he went to Govindagat to take his bath. In Govindagat he saw these young girls taking their baths. Then he saw on one of the young girls there was this big black snake right in the back of her hair about to bite her. Sanatan was saying get away, get away, get away. But they didn't hear. They were just laughing and joking. So Sanatan Goswami started going through the waters and they disappeared. Smiling and laughing. He understood. Actually, it's true. The gopis revealed to me that Rupa Goswami's description is perfect. Her hair is like a black snake. So he came back to Rupa Goswami and told this story and they were both very much in the ecstasy of this darshan. Sanatan Goswami lived in his old age just on the banks of Manasi Ganga near Govardhan Hill in a place called Chakaleshwar Mahadev. This area is called Chakratirtha. Sanatan Goswami would write his books and do his bhajan there. But one night there were so many mosquitoes that were tormenting him. The next morning he thought that this is not a good place to do my bhajan. So he was just about to leave. Chakaleshwar Mahadeva is an ancient Shiva Lingam which was originally installed by Vajranava, the great grandson of Krishna. It is one of the four principal Shiva Lingams of Braja. Lord Shiva could not bear the thought of separation from Sanatan Goswami. He appeared in the disguise of a Brahmin. Oh, Sanatan, Goswamiji, you are going somewhere? He said, yes, I must go. These mosquitoes are too much. I cannot do my seva to Lord Chaitanya. The Brahmin begged him, please, just stay one more night. If the mosquitoes disturb you again, then leave tomorrow. 
Sanatana Goswami's heart was so soft, he could not say no to the loving offerings or appeals of a devotee. Lord Shiva then contacted the demigod who was in charge of insect life and ordered that demigod keep the mosquitoes away from Chakratirtha. So Sanatana Goswami lived happily there. He had a vow every single day he would do the full 12 koshas parikrama of Govardhan. If you remember last Kartik, we did the parikrama of the small root of Giriraj Govardhan. That took us 16 hours. Of course, we were not rushing by any means. He would do the long route, means going by Chandra Sarovar and, and other distant areas every day. Then he would come back and do his writings, meet with the other Goswamis when they would come. He was constantly immersed in his devotional service. The years went by and Sanatan became very old. But still he would do his parikrama with great strain and difficulty. Lord Gopinath appeared in the guise of a cowherd boy With his own hands, he lovingly wiped the perspiration from Sanatan Goswami's body as he was doing his parikrama. Krishna had tears flowing from his eyes. He said, Oh Goswamiji, I cannot tolerate seeing you struggling and straining so much to do this circumambulation every day. You're old. You're practically invalid. Stop doing it. There's no need. Sanatana Goswami said, I have made my vow. I made my vow to Krishna. And only if Krishna orders will I give it up. The child then climbed to the top of Govardhan Hill. When he climbed to the top of the hill, by his own ecstatic devotion to his devotee, he caused the hill to melt and his footprints entered into one of the stones. The cowherd boy then took the stone and brought it down to Sanatan Goswami. He said, these are Krishna's personal footprints. Now if you circumambulate this stone, it will be equal to circumambulating the whole of Govardhan Hill. In your old age, you please do this as your service. Then the child carried the stone all the way back to Chakra Tirtha, placed it in his bhajan kutir, and disappeared. Sanatan Goswami was looking everywhere for the child, but he could not find him. Then he realized that this was Krishna. Krishna has given me the order. Every day after that, he would perform his parigrama four times going around this Govardhan Shiva. Sanatana Goswami wrote many books of which Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami explains four are prominent. The Brihad Bhagavatamrita, which perfectly explains what is a devotee, what is devotion, who is Krishna, and what is love for Krishna. 
he wrote Hari Bhakti Vilas, which describes the rules, the regulations, and the etiquette that devotees should observe for achieving Krishna consciousness. He wrote the Dasama Tipani, also known as Srimad Vaishnav Toshini, which was a very elaborate, extensive commentary of the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. That book he gave to Srila Jiva Goswami to edit. And Jiva Goswami later wrote his editorial offering and named it the Lagu Toshani. Both books are still available. And Sanatana Goswami wrote the Dasama Charita. Living at Chakratirtha in his very old age, he became the very life and soul of all the residents of Vrindavan. When he was too old to travel from village to village to meet the Brijabhasis, they would regularly come to him to receive his blessings. It was at Chakratirtha on Guru Purnima that Srila Sanatana Goswami disappeared from this world. When the Brijabhasis heard that Sanatana Goswami had departed, it was an unbearable thunderbolt that struck their hearts. The whole of Braja was bitterly lamenting. Thousands upon thousands and practically every Braja Basi and Braja came to Chakratirtha to offer their last respects to Srila Sanatana Goswami. Because he is the guru of all the Brijabhasis, they declare that his disappearance day is Guru Purnima. As an act of worship, knowing how the Parikrama of Govardhan Hill was so dear to him, they all perform Parikrama in his honor. And to this very day. The largest parikrama of Govardhan Hill is on Guru Purnima. The last day of Kartik, hundreds and thousands of Brijabhasis do the parikrama of Govardhan. But far more than that on Guru Purnima. And recently one of our god brothers living near Govardhan in one of Srila Prabhupada's temples. He asked Brijabhasi, just a common Brijabhasi who herds cows, he asked him, why on this day of the full moon of Guru Purnima is there so many hundreds and thousands of Brijabhasis doing this parikram of Govardhan? And he said, because this is the disappearance day of our Guru Dev, Sanatana Goswami. He is the Guru of all of Braja. And this is the way we celebrate, because we know this is how to please him. Srila Prabhupada often quoted especially two verses from Srila Sanatana Goswami. They are found repeatedly in his books and in his lectures. One, which explains that one is Brahman by quality and by initiation of a bona fide spiritual master, not by birth. This verse states that just as bell metal 
is turned into gold by the alchemical process of adding mercury. Similarly, when one, even a person who is of the lowest caste, when he takes initiation from a bona fide spiritual master, he becomes the best of the Brahmins. Another verse that Prabhupada often quoted, as milk touched by the lips of a serpent has poisonous effects. Similarly, even hearing Harikatha or the knowledge of the sacred scriptures from a person who is not a proper devotee of the Lord, it can contaminate our hearts. Sanatana Goswami's worshipable deity, Madan Mohan, due to the invasion of Aurangzeb and his armies, was taken to Jaipur. And the disciplic descendants of the disciples of Sanatana Goswami continued the worship. By Sanatana Goswami's mercy, the daughter of the king of Jaipur, she worshipped that deity as her life and soul. When she came of marriageable age, it was decided that she would marry the prince of Karoli, another kingdom, not so far from Bharatpur. She told her father that I've given my life to be the chaste servant of Madan Mohan. I cannot go anywhere else. He is my life and soul. So the arrangements between the kings were already made. It was too late to change it. So what to do? The two kings came together and decided that the king of Karoli would build a beautiful temple for Madan Mohan in Karoli. And the king of Jaipur would give the deity as dowry. So she very happily, usually the bride is taken on a procession to the village of the bridegroom. But this time, Madan Mohan was taken on procession to Karoli on her insistence, and she just went as a maidservant. To this day, Sri Madan Mohan is worshipped in the village of Karoli. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami prays in Chaitanya Charitamrita that I accept Sanatan Goswami as the teacher who has given me pure devotional service. And I have accepted Rupa Goswami as the teacher who has given me the taste for the ecstatic ras of Vrindavan. In the Vilapa Kushumanjali, Srila Prabhupada explains, our Prayojana Guru, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, offers a verse to Sanatan Goswami, worshipping him as his teacher on the path of bhakti. Sanatan Goswami is the Sambandha Guru of our Sampradaya. It is through his life and his teachings that we can receive the proper understanding and realizations of our relationship with Krishna. Devotees, over the centuries, visit his Samadhi Mandir behind Sri 
Madan Mohan temple, begging and praying for his mercy. His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, our beloved Guru Maharaj, has so perfectly bestowed upon us the mercy of the lotus feet of all of our great Acharyas, headed by Srila Sanatana Goswami. So let us pray with our hearts and souls that we can follow in the footsteps of these dear associates of the Lord and make our only aspiration in life to be the servant of the servant of their servants. As it has been expressed, the special paramount characteristic of Sanatan was humility, which is the essence of all of our devotion. Trinada Pisanichena, Tarora Pisahishnana, Amanina Manadena, Kirtaniya Sadahari. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally chose Sanatan Goswami to reveal this opulence and to teach the world. Let us pray to him that we can truly be genuinely humble servants of the servants of his servants and free of all pride and desire for prestige to chant the holy names of Lord Krishna. I think that you have all demonstrated this type of humility and tolerance by so patiently sitting through this long talk today. Please forgive me for any inconvenience. Thank you very much.